What is up guys, good old fashioned cola back here for some more Animal Crossing. Right now in Ohio, it's June 1st at 11.38 a.m. Let's get this stuff started. Uh, once again, I don't know why I always go back for the letters. I don't care to go through them. Because it's time for the discussion of the day. Uh, it seems like every time I hop back on this game, a natty shirt, what is that, natural light? That was the worst joke I've ever told, ever, in my entire life. Um, don't tell me Bob moved. Oh, okay. I was like, I don't play this game, but I would be sad regardless. Um, every time I hop back on here, it seems like there's a new pop-punk emo band that has come back into relevancy. Uh, Panic at the Disco, my former favorite band in high school, or, or at least one of them, uh, dropped a new song today, and by them I mean Brendan Urie, uh, because we all know it's pretty much just the Brendan Urie experience at this point. Uh, but it's actually really good. I was I was nervous, uh, caution cautiously optimistic when I saw they were teasing new music because, uh, let's be honest, ah, fuck, what's the what's the album even called? I don't know. It was the Poppy album that came out couple years ago. Why can't I remember it now? It's that forgettable. Um, it's got high hopes on it. That's all I remember. Um, <laughs> regardless, that one wasn't really all that good. It had its moments, but it definitely was just like, yeah, you're just trying to be on pop radio, Brendan. We get it. You make songs with Taylor Swift now. Not that Taylor Swift is inherently bad either, but that the song they did together was just awful, horrible. Um, anyways, uh, they are definitely back. It sounds more in line with, it's like a cross between Vices and Virtues and Too Weird to Live. Thematically, it's too weird, uh, and like, sonically. I mean, it's definitely got more of a pop edge than Vices did, but it's, it's very instrument driven. Uh, you can tell he like, it, it sounds kind of like old school pop. I don't know, like, Elton John-esque. Queen, maybe. I fuck with that. Like, pop rock. Old school. Um, but they did announce a tour. They're coming to Columbus, and I'm on the fence, because last time I saw them... Oh, Pray for the Wicked. That's what the album was called. I saw them on the Pray for the Wicked tour, and I was like, man, this is just really rehearsed. Like, this is definitely, like, a big show, and they do the same shit every night. It's like... When did this become his job? It seemed like the music wasn't as important as just getting that check. And I can't blame the guy, but it just like wasn't for me. And I was like, I don't think I want to see Panic at the Disco anymore. That's what I said the last time I ever saw them. And now I'm like, eh, I'm kind of on the fence about, should I, should I go to this tour? So, I don't know. On the fence. And in classic Panic at the Disco fashion... Their openers aren't very good. I have no idea who they are. I mean, they could be really good, but like I said, I have no idea who any of them are. Uh, anyways, uh, on to the next topic. I've been playing a whole hell of a lot of New Horizons recently because I realized I was pretty close to paying off my house, I think, for the final time. Uh, I owe about 170,000 bells left, and it just hit June 1st, so that means all the good fish are coming out. Uh, so I can probably get that paid down in a couple of days if I grind away at night and catch a... Oh, sorry, coffee burp. Jesus. If I catch a bunch of good fish, uh, I can get that whittled away pretty quickly. Um... And I also do have to update you guys. I did get my Kendrick Lamar tickets, so I will be seeing Kendrick Lamar come August, uh, which is very, very exciting. Kendrick has always been one of my favorite artists, and uh, you just can't argue with his like genius lyric, ugh, genius lyrical like writing style. Uh, I mean, he's the only non-jazz or classical musician to win a Pulitzer. For a reason, because this just the storytelling aspect of Kendrick's albums is ridiculous. Um, and then also, I got to talk about. I've been trying to uh, 
kind of cheat the system here. I, I learned that you can dump uh, Wii U game files onto your like Wii U somehow, and I've been toying around with that because I soft modded my Wii U a couple of years back. Uh, so I should, theoretically should be able to do it, but I cannot figure it out for the life of me. If anybody knows how to do that, point me in the right direction, because I don't want to pay uh, like $50, $60 for Twilight Princess HD because I never bought it in the past. I th honestly, I think some copies were like 70 that I've seen online. And it's like, Jesus Christ, Nintendo, can't you just port Twilight Princess HD and Wind Waker HD to the Switch already? Because... I don't want to pay that. So I got one, got the copy out for my work, and I tried to dump the files onto my system, and it just was not working. They would not show up. Uh, so if anybody's got a good guide out there, uh, let me know. Point me in that direction. Uh, and then also, in terms of other really good new music, State Champs put out a really good album, which I would say is definitely the pop punk album of the summer, so far at least. Uh, that song they did with Ben Barlow was fantastic. Uh, and then Static Dress. If you guys haven't heard Static Dress yet, uh, and you're into that like early 2000s post-hardcore sound, like Silverstein, Thrice, uh, Census Fail, um, who else? From First to Last. Uh, they would all fall into that kind of sonic sound. Uh, definitely, definitely give Static Dress a listen. Sober Exits is personally my favorite song they've done, but they just put out a new album. I cannot remember what it's called, uh, but just search Static Dress anywhere and you'll find it. Um, and then also to update you on that job uh, job hunt that I was on uh, for that animal care job, uh, still have not received anything, so I'm just going to assume that I suck and... I'll never work with animals and not people. So uh, there's another job that opened up at our zoo that would take care of the Australian animals, so like the wallabies, the koalas, kangaroos. Um, I can't remember what else is over there. I think the dingoes are over there. Uh, I was going to apply for that, but then I saw that there was like 30 applicants already, and I was like, I'm not even qualified to apply for this. It would have been a shot in the dark. Regardless, I'm not taking all that time, so I didn't apply for that. Uh, so I'm still, still working with people uh, and their stupid computer problems. One day, um, but also got to talk about the Cavaliers landing that 14th pick. Uh, it's disappointing that we didn't get to jump up, but. Um, Still, just the fact that we get our pick back is nice. That we didn't completely waste it on uh, Karis LeHurt. Uh, if you couldn't tell, not the biggest fan of that trade. I think it kind of ruined the offense. Uh, I mean, it would have been nice if we could have got somebody else who fit a little bit better. I was more of a fan of... Uh... Oh, I wonder if that shows up. Uh, I was more of a fan... Of uh, I, there was some like rumblings that we were looking at Harrison Barnes. I think he would have fit a little bit better as like a spot up shooter, and then maybe we could have made another move for another playmaker, because Karis Levert was neither for us, <laughs> like he was supposed to be. I mean, he wasn't supposed to be a spot up shooter, but he was supposed to be a like shot creator, uh, which he definitely, definitely wasn't. Um, and then finally. To end things off, we're going to do the uh, the most controversial thing. Damn, I've never seen the cops talk to somebody. I've been playing this game for like 20 years. <laughs> um, the most controversial uh, thing I've probably ever done. Uh, my Modest Mouse album ranking. I talked about this in the last episode, and we're just going to do it real quick here. Fire off. Uh... I did count uh, the two EPs uh, in this ranking just because, I mean, they hold some of Modest Mouse's best songs. So here we go. At number 10, uh, Long Drive. So Drama Mean, Custom Concern, Breakthrough. Those are all great songs. But everything else just never stuck with me. So that's why it's the, uh, the last on the list. Uh, number 9, Nasty Parlor Tricks. Uh, these are all shortened titles, obviously, because I'm not going to write the whole things. Uh, down. Uh, Night on the Sun is fantastic. 
Here It Comes is fantastic, but beyond that, doesn't hold enough of my interest. Uh, number eight, Building Nothing Out of Something. Uh, this was really hard to put down this low, but I feel like outside of like broke, never ending math equation, uh, what else is on there? Fuck, what else is on there? <laughs> it, it's a fantastic B-Sides album, but that's what it is. It's a B-Sides album. There's some stuff on there that's just like, yeah, this is great, but there's better stuff. So that's why it's at number eight. Number seven, The Golden Casket. Uh, fantastic follow-up to Strangers to Ourselves, which we will get to. Um, some of my favorite songs are on here, like The Sun Hasn't Left, uh, We Are Between is good, um, Japanese Trees is fantastic, um, what else is good? Um, shit, what else do I really like? Uh, Back to the Middle, Back to the Middle is really good, um, but obviously, I mean, it's not, it doesn't hit the highs that some other albums hit, for me at least. Uh, number six, No One's First and You're Next. This has probably my favorite Modest Mouse song on it, King Rat. Um, close behind it is Satellite Skin and Autumn Beds. Uh, but outside of those and maybe the Whale Song, I, Perpetual Motion Machine doesn't do it for me. Uh, what else is on here? History Sticks to Your Feet, I think, is on there. Uh, those don't. Those don't quite hit as hard as uh, King Rat for me, so that's why it's at number six. Number five is uh, going to be controversial to some people, maybe uh, maybe even a little bit too high to other people. Is good news for people who love bad news. This was my introduction to the band, as it is for most people. Float On is a classic. Ocean Breeze Salty is one of my favorite songs of all time. Uh, but maybe it's just because it's been overplayed everywhere is the reason why it ranks at number five. I mean, if you're looking to start with Modest Mouse, definitely start with Good News. Uh, you will not be disappointed. There's not a bad song on here. Number four, We Were Dead Before the Ship Even Sank. This is like Good News' better older brother uh, that's a little bit harder to get into. Uh, or actually, it would be Younger Brother, I guess, because it came out afterwards. Uh, Dashboard is something that could fall into that Good News easy to get into thing maybe even florida but songs like spitting venom um education these are deeper cuts uh that sound a little weird for some people almost like kind of well i mean there's weird songs on good news too i was gonna say kind of like tom waitsy uh because i mean you go on good news and there's the devil's work day and um shit what is that other one that i like Anyways, uh, it fits into good news, and if you're gonna listen to, if you're gonna start with good news, if you're not into Modest Mouse and want to get into them, uh, definitely follow up with "We Were Dead Before the Ship Even Sank," because uh, that can lead you into the more weirder, deep cut Modest Mouse. Uh, and then number two and number three kind of interchange depending on the season and depending on my mood. Uh, but on this list, I wrote number three, "The Lonesome Crowded West," and number two, "The Moon in Antarctica." Uh, which are two of my favorite albums ever. Uh, definitely, definitely belong in like the fucking Smithsonian for for indie rock because doing the cockroach, uh, third planet, cowboy Dan, cowboy Dan, of course. Everybody loves cowboy Dan. Um, Definitely, definitely. It, uh, if you move past the first two, uh, Good News and We Were Dead, definitely go on to the Moon and Ar Moon and Antarctica. That's hard to say fast. Um, because that, that will open up the rest of Modest Mouse for you, I feel like. Uh, and then the most controversial of all, number one, Strangers to Ourselves. I will not be taking comments or questions about this. Uh, it's definitely just because that's like the album that came out after I got into Modest Mouse. But I just like feel like it's perfect. Even Pistol. I, I know most people despise Pistol. But I think it, it serves a place on the album. As weird and as crazy as it sounds. Just give Pistol a listen to. And like that's about the weirdest Modest Mouse will get. 
uh, outside of maybe, like, some of their older demo stuff. God damn it, fuck off. Um, but, I mean, it has the ground walks with time in a box, uh, lampshades on fire, coyotes, uh, the best room, which has my favorite Modest Mouse lyric of all time. Uh, just give it a listen, and I'm sure you'll hear it right at the end. I won't even spoil it for you guys because you gotta go listen to the song um anyways let me know what your modest mouse ranking is down below if you're into the band uh and if you're not go give them a listen to uh they're not for everybody but definitely definitely at least give them a shot you'll probably like float on i i find it hard to believe that anybody couldn't like float on uh, but outside of that, uh, I feel like most people don't know Modest Mouse. Uh, anyways, I'm Good Old Fashioned Cola, and I will talk to you guys next time.